Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms. I wanna know you, I wanna find you in every season, in every moment. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God.
Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's a joy to come your way as we begin uh, the new year and uh, spend some time with you in the Word of God and uh, also pray with you. The book of Psalms, collection of Psalms written several hundred years ago, around uh, several of them written by King David and uh, others who were there ministering in the tabernacle of David are a collection of songs uh, that were used in worship, in praise, that were used to express prayer and even just express feelings, emotions that uh, individuals were going through at that time and pour, pour out, enable them to pour out their heart towards God. Now, there is one particular psalm which we could very well say is the most favorite psalm. If you would ask people, uh, Christians, believers around the world, you know, which one psalm would you uh, be able to recite, which you uh, feel speaks to you um, uh, uh, deeply, that, that you hold as a favorite psalm, it is very likely that most people would point to Psalm 23. And so on the program today, we would like to just spend some time looking at Psalm 23 and just meditating in it and drawing some insights from that psalm. As I mentioned, it's probably a very uh, well-known psalm, a favorite psalm, and so you probably are very familiar with it, probably could recite that psalm uh, without even look turning into your Bible. But it's always good to remind ourselves of scriptures and of the word that we are familiar with, just to bring it back put it in front of us, look at it once again, draw insight, draw strength, draw encouragement from the Word of God. And that's what we're going to do uh, as we go through Psalm 23. Let's read the psalm through together. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm was written by King David, and most of us uh, are aware of his origins, how he started out as a young shepherd boy taking care of his father's sheep, and he spent several of his early years being a shepherd and being a good shepherd, doing well at that, protecting the sheep from uh, the lion, the bear, taking the sheep out, you know, every day to graze in the pastures, bring them back and doing whatever a shepherd would do to take care of the sheep and nurture it and feed it and so on. So David had that personal understanding of being a shepherd and a personal understanding of what a shepherd would do for the sheep that he was responsible for. Now, of course, uh, being a shepherd was a common profession, a means of livelihood in those days. Many, many people uh, uh, were familiar with that uh, profession and taking care of the sheep. And that term shepherd in those days was also used for any leader, it was used even for, to refer to the king as a shepherd. But here it is so interesting that David would now attribute that characteristic of that profession, of that vocation, if you will, to God himself. As he begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. 
Key things there. The Lord, Elohim, God Almighty, the great God, Creator God, Almighty God, the eternal God. God is my, now making it very personal, my shepherd. That means he takes care of me the same way a shepherd would take care of a sheep. And David understood the, the, the importance of that relationship. And so for you and I today, uh, while we may not be as familiar with shepherding and taking care of a sheep the way David was, uh, having first-hand experience in that, yet for us to recognize Almighty God as our shepherd, somebody who relates to us that way, who takes care of us, who's personally interested in each one of his sheep. So David coins one of the Jehovah titles here as he calls God Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. And this truth is seen in several other places in Scripture. For instance, in Psalm 95, verses 6 and 7, uh, the psalmist there says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the sheep of His hand. Once again, drawing the picture of God, who is our Maker, who is our God, and He's also our shepherd, and we are His sheep. In Isaiah 40, in verse 11, the prophet Isaiah says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb, lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with the young. God dealing with his people as a shepherd would do so with his sheep, lovingly, tenderly, caring, protecting, nurturing. That's the way God deals with his people. And that's the way God deals with you and me. God is your shepherd. A shepherd never mistreats. He never uh, uh, is, uh, you know, hurtful towards his sheep, but he's loving. He gently carries them in his bosom. He gently leads those who are with the young. That's how God is for you and me. And because God is my shepherd, then David uh, derives several things that God does for us that we as a sheep of his pastor that we can experience knowing that God is our shepherd. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I will not be in lack. The shepherd is not going to let his sheep starve. The shepherd is not going to abandon his sheep. The shepherd is not going to deprive the sheep of what it needs. The, therefore, he says, I have this confident assurance that I will not be in lack. God is my shepherd. He is going to make sure that all that I have need of is provided for, whether it's food, whether it's healing for wounds, whether it's care, comfort, provision, protection, guidance, direction. God provides for me. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. So lying down, He brings me to places where I can rest. Now for you and me, that would be our God giving us the ability to rest, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, keeping us in that place of calm and rest, and in green pastures. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures, talking about provision, abundance of supply. So God causes us to rest in that place of complete provision. And that's how he deals with us as a shepherd. He brings us through those seasons of life where we are at rest and that there is the complete provision of God. We lack for nothing. We are concerned about nothing because God has provided for all that we have need of. And then he continues saying, He leads me beside still waters. Still waters talking about refreshing. God bringing refreshing to our soul. God bringing refreshing to our inner person. Sometimes the journey can be tiring. Sometimes the journey can be uh, in, the, in the hot sun. It, it can be uh, enervating. It, can be, uh, it could leave, drain us of some of our energy. And so he brings us to those still waters where there is quietness and there is refreshing for our soul. And he restores my soul in bringing renewing, bringing reviving to our inner person. And that's very important, uh, um, the, the, that's, that verse there. He 
restores our soul. Verse 3, that God brings renewing to our emotional person, you know, in our journey through life. There could be so many things that hurt, harm, and do damage to our soul, our emotional person. But here, our good shepherd, our shepherd, he brings healing. He brings restoration. He brings renewing and wholeness back to our emotional person, our soul. He restores my soul. And David continues, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So here is a picture of a shepherd leading his sheep. The sheep are following him. There's one thing the sheep know, that the shepherd is going to lead them down the right path for them. And the sheep rest in that. Similarly, you and I, as we follow our shepherd, the Lord, our shepherd, we can rest assured that he leads us in paths of righteousness. Paths that are right, right before God. So if there is a path that, that you feel inclined to take, but it is not the path of righteousness, if it involves unrighteousness in any way, or any manner or fashion, you can be assured that that's not the path the shepherd is leading you down. Because the shepherd always leads us in the paths of righteousness. And he does this for his name's sake. His honor is at stake. His name is at stake by, by the path the sheep take, by the path that you and I go. We are bearing the reputation, the name, the honor of our shepherd. And so the shepherd is very is sure to it ensures that we go down paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There are times the Lord would lead us from the front and there are times the Lord will lead us from the back. Whether he's saying, you go ahead, that's the path I've prepared for you. Or whether he's up in front saying, follow me as I go forward. Regardless of how the leading is, we know it is always in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then David continues, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now the valley of the shadow of death. So here's the picture of a shepherd having to lead the sheep through the valley. At the lower part of the mountain range, uh, there could be dense forests, there could be thick thorns, there could be wild animals lurking. So there could be all kinds of danger. And, 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 and so the sheep uh, understands that even when the shepherd takes them down through a valley, a difficult valley, uh, which may seem perilous, which may seem dangerous, yet the sheep responds saying, I am not afraid, I will fear no evil because the shepherd is with me. Now for you and I, how does that apply to our lives? There will be times and seasons. When we go through deep darkness, that valley of the shadow of death, where there is deep darkness. Now, it does not mean that uh, it refers to physical death, but it's those life situations that are deep and dark, like going through a valley, almost going through times of death where there is pain and there is grief or there is turmoil. And even if we have to go through such times and those uh, dark seasons of life, those night seasons of the soul, whatever the cause may be. It could be some financial trouble. It could be challenges that we face. It could be betrayal. It could be hurt from loved ones. And whatever the cause of that deep darkness is, there is one thing you and I can be assured, that we need not fear any harm, any evil, any destruction, any devastation, because the shepherd is still with us. He is right there leading us through that valley. And he knows how to get us through that, bring us out on the other side of that deep darkness. And as we go through that valley, David says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So the shepherd carries, two, carries probably one uh, piece or, or one stick, or maybe he carried two. The rod and the staff. The rod is to guard and the staff is to guide the sheep. And so the, sh the sheep rest assured that the shepherd is carrying his rod, which serves to guard the sheep and serves to guide the sheep. 
So the sheep look at the shepherd. The shepherd is very present there. He is there with them as they're going through the valley. But the shepherd also is carrying a rod. He has the power, the means, the ability to guide the sheep, keep them off from going off the path in those, in those uh, ravens. And he has the ability to protect the sheep from any uh, lurking danger, from any wild animal that may seem, that may, uh, that could possibly attack the sheep. So the sheep take comfort in that. And so you, you and I can also rest in this, that God is more than able to guide us correctly through the dark season, and God is more than able to guard us through the dark season of our lives. He will protect us so that our lives are not brought to ruin. He will keep us safe through it. And then he says, after this, what does he expect? What does he anticipate? He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, there seems to be a little shift from God being a shepherd to God being a host. That's one way of looking at it. Or if you continue with that same thought of God being our shepherd, here you see that God, the, the shepherd bringing the sheep to a place of abundance, a place of uh, celebration, even in the midst of lurking danger, in the midst of enemies. God will prepare a table for you in the presence of the very threats that seem to destroy your life. That means in the presence of enemies, whatever those enemies were, whether, whether they were demonic opposition, demonic works, whether it was harmful people, dangerous people, whatever it was, right before them, God is going to cause you to celebrate. God is going to put his honor on you. He's going to spread a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And he says, you, you anoint my head with oil. The oil typifying the work of the Holy Spirit that brings healing, that brings uh, uh, re refreshing, uh, that brings strength. He anoints my head with oil. There is a welcoming in the very presence of God. There's a healing balm that uh, brings healing to the wounds that we may have. And he, he is bountiful to us. He is generous to us. He fills our cup, not just half, not just to the brim, but to the overflowing. My cup overflows. So here is God, my shepherd. He causes me, he celebrates me in the presence of the enemy. He brings healing. He brings strength. He brings renewing by anointing our head with oil. And then he deals so bountifully, so lavishly with us that he causes our cup to overflow. That is what God does for each one of his sheep. And then David concludes the psalm by saying, I have this confidence. I have this assurance. I know this for sure. He says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. What an amazing uh, truth. What an amazing confidence to have that because God is my shepherd, there is goodness and mercy that he keeps aside for me throughout my life. God is not going to cause my life to be destroyed. He is not going to allow my life to be ruined. But he's going to fill every day of my life with goodness and mercy. And here is the hope we have. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Once this life is over, I know where I'm going. Because he's the shepherd of my soul. Not just here in time, but even when time runs out. Even when time is over and I depart from this world, I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with my shepherd. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a powerful psalm. As you and I continue in our journey through life, what an assurance to know that the Lord is our shepherd and he is our good shepherd and he will deal as a good shepherd with his sheep. God is your good shepherd. You are the sheep of his pasture. He will never let you down. All that a shepherd will do for his sheep, God is faithful to do it for your life. Stay fixed with your eyes on your shepherd. He is true to you. Let's pray together before we close. Father, we just thank you that you are our shepherd. And I pray for each person watching God that right now, that as a shepherd, that you will touch their lives. God, if there are people 
Lord, who need healing in their, in their minds or in their bodies. As a good shepherd who anoints his sheep with oil, who restores the soul of his sheep right now, let your healing power flow through them. I take authority over every work of the devil that has affected their minds or their bodies or their emotions. I break it off their lives and in the name of Jesus, our good shepherd, the great shepherd of, our, of the sheep, I release his healing power to you. Be made whole in your mind, in your body. Be healed, be restored, be made whole in the name of Jesus. Now receive that healing. Thank God for it. Thank him that he is your shepherd. Thank him that he's faithful to you and he will lead you through green pastures beside still waters. He will prepare that table for you in the presence of the enemy. He will cause your cup to overflow. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. How do you know the Holy Spirit is there? He says, when you all come together, each of you, you're coming with something. You've come with a song, with a psalm, with a tongue, with an interpretation, with a revelation, with a teaching. They're coming with those gifts ready to pour out to one another. When you come to church, you're saying, God, use me today to speak a word to somebody who needs it. Use me today to maybe share something I've learned with somebody. They come like that.